So, obviously, if you are a Wales fan, you know that they will kick off today at 2 p.m. against Switzerland. We're going to talk to fans of uh, both Wales and Switzerland in an hour. At 5 today, it's Denmark against Finland, and later, Belgium play Russia. Tomorrow, at Wembley, it's England against Croatia. And the England team have said they will continue to take the knee before kick-off to make a stand against racism. Last weekend, some England fans booed as players bent down on the pitch before the start of their friendly with Romania. England's captain for that match was Marcus Rashford, the youngest black man to lead the national side. This is what he had to say for those who booed. We're not just going to quit because some people disagree with it for whatever reasons. Um, so that's that's our thought process behind it. We're gonna we're gonna stick at it. We believe that it's a strong and powerful message. Let's speak to two England supporters who were at the game at the Riverside: Billy Grant, who's been following England for decades, and Andrew Dunn, who's going who's been going regularly to England games for seven years and is a member of the Social Democratic Party. He used to be a member of UKIP. He booed the players when they took the knee last week, and also at the Austria game as well. Uh, Andrew Dunn, hello to you. Hello. Hi, Thanks good morning. Me. Now, England's Jordan Henderson says, we all stand together against racism. That's the reason why we continue to take the knee. Why do you boo that? Um, because I think we need to all stand together against racism like we did in Bulgaria, when the main slogan on display in that ground was no to racism, something that everybody uh, could support. In, a, in the 21st century, all reasonable people are against racism. Uh, as there's no, we now know that there's no biological justification for it. Everyone was together, and it was a unique night in England's uh, football, in the history of England's support, because people uh, loudly uh, sang anti-racist songs, and there was nobody saying, "Oh, I disagree with that," or nobody. I've never met an England fan on an England away trip where they've said, um, "You know, I disagree with um, the no to racism idea." Everyone agrees with it. It's got consensus. So why, why are you booing taking the knee then? Because this is something completely different. The the uh, the FA made an extraordinary decision in June 2020 to emblazon Premier League players' shirts with Black Lives Matter, the name of a far left uh, direct action political group. Um, well, wasn't, which, weren't they just stating a fact? Black Lives Matter. Um, well, I think that this is where the, the, this becomes a political divide. I mean, the note racism is something that. Tories and Labour supporters and whoever the people aren't interested in politics can support. But Black Lives Matter smacks for a lot of people of the kind of left wing approach to anti racism, which is kind of for, for those on the right is riddled with double standards. It's yeah. kind of like you can but say Black Lives Matter, but you can't say White Lives Matter. Why can't we just say All Lives Matter and express the, our view that human beings are essentially of equal worth? Rather the, than the England team, Jordan group. Henderson, uh, Gareth Southgate, Marcus Rashford, they've explained why they're doing it. They've explained yeah, it's nothing to do with the political arguments. It's about a stand against racism. They've explained um, why they take the knee. Do you, well, do, I think, do you I not think believe it, them? It, I think it counts for something. and I'm not entirely dismissing what they're saying. But what I do think is that in the minds of people, um, when it was brought to English football, it was in the wake of the George Floyd killing. So it's associated in the minds of, uh, uh, of the public, including me, of... Um, it's associated with Black Lives Matter protests, the, the group involved. But they've told you. Why they're yeah, doing they've it? Yeah, they, they've told us. They've told us that they they are doing that gesture to mean that. When we see that gesture, we we know that they can't shake off. It takes more than a, a statement by a football coach and a, a couple of players. So you don't believe them? Obviously, I, I do believe them. I accept that that's why they're doing it. But they they should also understand that people will always interpret it for what it usually means, which is um, over the last uh, over the last couple of years, over the last year, it's been protests. Uh, in support of a group that despises Western civilization, that makes claims about in the effects of institutional racism on social outcomes that are frankly completely unsupported by... by Let me ask you this then. How do you think it makes the England players feel when they hear some supporters booing just before the referee blows the whistle? Um, I think, well, that's the reason why I wouldn't do it. Um, I'm planning to go, hopefully, if I get tickets to the, the knockout stages of this tournament. I wouldn't do it in a competitive match. I think we've made our point, but we want, to, want them to know we feel strongly about this. How Just, do you think it made them feel last su Sunday? I, I, I think it, I hope it made them think uh, about their actions and reconsider. Do you think it I, would make them play better? Uh, no, I think that's why I wouldn't do it in a competitive match. But they, they've got to realise that a lot of people feel very strongly about this. A lot of reasonable people who, who disagree with Black Lives Matter 
Um, and it tends to be, as we see, it's a left-right political issue because all the politicians who come out in support of the Neely tend to be the Labour Party. Just okay. about all the, but, all the I mean, you, 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 can, keep, you can keep talking about the politics of Black Lives Matter. Yeah. The members of that team and the manager have made it, and the FA have made it absolutely clear it's nothing yeah. to do with the political movement. I can give you well, another quote if you want. Gareth yeah. Southgate says, I think we've got to a situation where some people think it's a political stand that they don't agree with. That's not the reason. They couldn't be clearer. But the, the, nobody else has ever used the, the kneeling in anything other than the, the movement that emerged. Um, and Apart, in, well, this England team is. But they are. That's the first time. It's not as if different political. Well, well just why can't you keep quiet for twenty seconds? Reason. Yes. Sorry. Why can't you keep quiet for twenty seconds and respect what they because choose to do? If they have the right to express a political view uh, before a football match that I've paid to get into, I've got a right to express uh, dissent towards that disagreement. Fair enough. How would you if feel? If, how would you feel if, before you started your job, at the start of a day, some people came into your office? I don't know what you do for a living, Mr. Dunn, and booed <laughs> right. before you started work. Well, I think it was a bit like that in my last job, actually. I mean, that's well, what. No, I'm being serious. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, that's what I was expressing political views uh, uh, which were relevant to my work, and I was bullied for it. And I, would, I took my employer to a tribunal. Um, and the discrimination was real to be legal. So this is political correctness and, and the, the domination of, of left-wing beliefs in certain areas and the inability to actually express dissent and opposition to them is affecting people's lives. Look That's not happened. why they're doing it. They couldn't have been well, they, 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 That's not know, why they're doing what, it. Let me, let me pause you there. I'm going to bring in another England supporter, if I may, Mr okay. Dunn. Uh, Billy Grant, who was also at uh, Sunday's match at the Riverside. Um, and you actually talked to some fans who were booing. What did you say to them, Billy Grant? Very simple. I mean, thanks for inviting us on, Victoria. It's interesting to hear the conversation, actually. Um, because for me, tell you what, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so tired. I'm so tired of this. We go to football for 40 odd years. Got grief on the terraces, kicked around the terraces by racists, by people, you know, going to the away games. It was always a danger for me. I was always on my own. And the fact is that no one really looked out for you. You had to look out for yourself. You go to the police, the police wouldn't help you. You go to your own clubs, the clubs will tell you, sorry, they put money into our pockets, so we're not going to do anything about it. Always on your own. And I tell you what, the last few years, all of a sudden, for once, black people and people who support them came around and said, tell you what, we've had enough of this. We've had enough of people being racist to us. You know, my teacher being old to me at school, me not getting the job that I want. We've had enough of this. They've come together. They found something that they've discovered themselves, which is taking the knee, which is a symbol for them saying, we don't agree with this. They've discovered it themselves. It's brilliant. And all of a sudden I'm speaking, oh my God, where has this been like for the last 40 years? What do you think and of Andrew Dunn's reason for booing the players when they take the knee? So what do you say? What is, what is the reason for no, it? No, no. What do you think of Andrew Dunn's reasons for booing when the players what, what, take the knee? Listen, I listen to Andrew. Listen, I've got, you know, I've got respect for anyone. I'm not going to sit down and I'm going to shout them off. But at the end of the day, of course, I don't agree with the reasoning because there's a couple of reasons why I don't agree with the reasoning. Andrew talked a lot about politics, right? For somebody who wants to take politics out of football, he just kept going on about politics the whole time. I'll go to football to watch a match, OK? I do not believe, it's not even I don't believe, I know this isn't about politics. My 12-year-old daughter, OK, she looks and says basically who is and isn't taking the knee because she believes that this is an affinity to the, to the, to the protest. So what I'm trying to say here is that when I, when I listen to Andrew, it's almost like somebody spun a yarn. They've thrown politics into the mix. But for all the people that go out there, all we want is that we want something that we own to show people that we're not happy about it. And I'll tell you something, he's talking about, you know, this was the first time it's linked with politics. I think sometimes people have got to read a book. Yeah. Go on, read a book, watch a film. Martin Luther King, 1965, walked from Selma to Montgomery. Why did he do that? Because of voting rights and also because basically blacks were getting a lot of grief in America. They were stopped by the police, they were beaten by the police, and when okay. they were stopped by the police, what did Martin Luther King do? He took the knee. And that's not even the earliest, that's not even the latest, it's not the earliest one. If you go back to the 19th century, okay, right, okay, the anti-slavery movement, if you look at pictures that they've got, and you've got slaves doing the knee, it's been a process that has been happening for years, and it's something that blacks have used, and people who support our cause have used, okay, when it's anti-oppression. So, listen, what, within football, like I said to you, I believe that something's got confused. I don't want to go to football to argue with people. I'm, I'm nervous bringing my daughter right 
and you know to, to, to the match on Sunday because I I've don't got want to, to see that I've, and I also fair enough Billy really, I've got to pause yeah. you there no, no, for no other reason than we have to opt out because we're also on BBC World but thank you very much uh, for your uh, contributions today <laughs> excuse me